This is the fifth estate winning headlines, your media police post, brought to you by the Fort Hall School of Government coming to you from Nairobi, Kenya. In this segment, we summarize some of the headlines that you might have missed this morning, but we also take a look at the political pieces that we call cartoons in this country. Today is the 8th of November 2019 and I am 2J. I am 2. And I am GK and in case you missed the headlines, here they are. Mm -hmm. In the star, Raila shrugs off DP Ruto intense Kibra by-election. Yes. In the standard, Raila locks Ruto out of bedroom. <laughs> and in the Daily Nation, yes. Raila's big victory as ODM retains Kibra. Mm. Absolutely. The only person who had predicted wrong on this table is sitting in the middle <laughs> of us. He no. declared very loudly yes, that Mariga was coming out on top. No, any, that's, any words? That's, that's and that DP had spent a third of his that's, that's, that's 2022 campaign <laughs> budget. That's right covertly. Here. Covertly. I actually told <laughs> this too. On the day that I say that I think Marisa will win. Mm -hmm. That guys, I think those lawyers will be divided like a nonsense. Uh, <laughs> and, if a tree and, falls and, in the forest and, and nobody hears and, it, and, 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 and the court will win. <laughs> I think, I think what we can do is take the three together. Mm -hmm. yeah. So we have a three-part criteria that we use to break down the headlines. We ask ourselves, is it topical or speculative? Is it groundbreaking or repetitive? And is it thoughtful or just plain lazy? Yes. Mm. They're all topical. Yes. yes. Election was definitely. yesterday. Yeah. Yeah. We have results. What are they? Yeah, so the results came in that Iman mm. secured a victory with 24,636 votes. Yes. Mariga coming in second with 11,230 votes. That was a with a yes. voter turnout of about 14. 41,000. Yeah. 41,000, yeah. give or take. Yeah. Yeah. My feeling is, and I said this last week, mm. people run for different reasons. Yes. And I really didn't believe that Ruto was running to, to win. win. Yes. But whatever he has done, he has made his point. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I would absolutely, yes. Mm -hmm. And I would hate to say that Raila has shrugged off Ruto. In fact, I think Ruto has probably earned 26% from the last time Kibra had an election. Yeah, exactly. Because yeah, in 2017, Kenakoff won with 78.3% of the votes. Mm -hmm. It was about 65,119 yes. votes. Yes. yes. So clearly, whatever Ruto was doing, yes. win or not, he has put a dent Absolutely. in Kibra. Absolutely. In Kibra. But then I also want to say this, that we are looking at it like there will be a 2022 presidential elec uh, election. <laughs> uh, that's, let's if assume. BBI has if, its if way. If BBI has its way. Now, if BBI has its way, yeah. I don't think this is a win for William Ruto. Mm -hmm. Matter of fact, I think what Kibra was, it was a stepping stone to BBI. Mm. Now, if William Ruto won a uh, Kibra election, then he would have gained so much momentum to go against BBI. Okay. But now that he has lost uh, Kibra, mm -hmm. I think it is now clear that the line has been drawn and all political convergences have converged around Uhuru Kenyatta and Raila Odinga. However, yeah. if we were to use Kibra as just an example of like a, a trial run, yes. if you compare 2017 and the by-election of yesterday, yeah. he managed very Absolutely. quickly Absolutely. to mobilize so much support yeah. and put a dent yeah. in a place that nobody thought that Absolutely. he would be able to. And that's a statement. And that I agree agree with. However, I'm saying in the context of not having a presidential election in 2022, <laughs> then William uh, William Ruto's efforts could be null and void. Okay, that's, oh, that's quite possible. Go. So, as for the standard and locking... Rocking. A place he shouldn't have been in the first place, isn't yeah, it? Absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> and, and now, let's be honest, yeah. William Ruto is actually literally at the door of the bedroom, and mm. he's knocking. He's knocking, yeah. He's knocking, and very soon he'll stop. He'll be in. So, like, about, so of our three headlines, which do we like the best? I most definitely like the standard. I like the standard as well. Yeah, I like the standard because as well. it means William Ruto has opened the gate, gone through the door, gone to the kitchen. <laughs> He's in the house. Eaten some mindy, and then <laughs> gone upstairs. We we'll check the washrooms and bathroom, and he said, Ah, I think there's a bedroom. <laughs> and he tried opening the bedroom and it's locked. <laughs> yeah, so, I think we give it to the standard. Most definitely. Uh, the so, the that we call cartoons in this country, where we also have a three-part criteria that we use. We ask ourselves, is it humorous or dry? Is it satirical or pessimistic? And yeah. is it effective or, or just, just plain, plain lazy? lazy? Look at us. Oh, fantastic. All right. You so in, this, in the Daily Nation, <laughs> we have Victor Tula. <laughs> I really laughed at this. I mean, I mean it's fantastic cartoon. Uh, caricature of uh, Raila Odinga mm -hmm. in an orange vest. He's been digging. Uh, the, the, this what looks is he like, digging? It looks like a grave, mm -hmm. right? <laughs> And uh, Musalia has been digging as well, mm -hmm. but he he's such a plump man <laughs> with a green vest. And uh, Kalonzo, as usual, he's just resting there he's next to up. his grave and a wiper on his forehead. Mm -hmm. 
and the uh, Ruto, I mean, uh, Uhuru Kenyatta has a bit of wine. It looks like wine. Mm -hmm. I'm sure it is not Ribena. Does mm -hmm. he drink Ribena? No, I don't think so. Well. <laughs> and uh, he's, uh, he's toasting with, with Rela Odinga. Mm -hmm. And one William Ruto is on the gravestone of one, and he's telling, <laughs> he's telling Kalonzo, keep, keep digging. digging. <laughs> <laughs> and of course, the gravestones say, yes, NASA, NASA. Yeah. NASA. The NASA is dead. I um, thought it was very funny. Guys, do you know something that we haven't noticed? If yeah. you look, there are not just three graves. Yeah. There are four. Yes. There's a fourth grave in the corner. Yes. Who is that for? Watangula. Watangula. No. <laughs> but he's out of the yes, absolutely. He's out of the picture. He's out of the picture. Of but he's even just a non-starter. Yeah. Nobody has bothered. Absolutely. But why is he telling Kalonzo to keep digging? I don't. It must come from the conversations that they're apparently they're having. Oh yes. Uh, yes. Who knows? The <laughs> emissaries. Mm. So. But, but it's also very telling that Uhuru and Ruto are on both sides of the grave. Mm. So what Dula is probably trying to tell us is, do you think Uhuru and Ruto have always had a scheme? Oh, wow. Uh, yes. That's one of my theories. I think that this is all a big charade, yeah. Oh, okay. And they're still <laughs> best friends in the background. So let's look at what's in there. <laughs> interesting. Story. Very interesting. <laughs> oh, my God. All right. <laughs> Caricature of himself, the Chief Justice <laughs> of the Court of the Judiciary. Mm -hmm. And uh, um, uh, yes, and he's stretching. And uh, that is uh, CJ Maraga. Mm -hmm. And he has formed the emblem of Mercedes. Mm -hmm. And let's call it like the way he likes to call it in his KC accent Mercedes C5800D. <laughs> and uh, the caption there is Maraga's stand oh forces. Maraga's stand forces the treasury to turn around. Yeah, exactly. Now, I was telling you guys earlier, in my view, I think Maraga was, Maraga's rant and tirade was premature because at the point. Mm -hmm. Of, uh, he was literally saying there were budget cuts. Mm -hmm. Budget cuts only happen when the president has signed into law the yeah. finance Because bill. actually his funds were now reinstated. Yes, yes exactly. So they, that's a context. Yeah, that's why reinstated. they're saying that it forced him to force the treasury to turn around. Yeah, yeah. The court said that they had to give back all that uh, the treasury was owed. Uh, look, if if the finance bill has not been assented to by the president, mm. then I don't know why. Maraga had all this time, from all the time the budget policy had been made to all the time the budget had been to ready, cry. To, uh, to cry. But him doing it now it means there's something he must have known. But mm -hmm. again, I think it was premature because the president had not appended his signature and that is exactly what he did yesterday. Listen, I love this cartoon. I do. It made me laugh so much. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it was very creative. <laughs> <laughs> Extremely yeah. creative. It was. Absolutely. And sometimes when one? I feel that Ozone does it overboard, I think this was, it was perfect. It was just right. It's fantastic. Finally, so Gado. Gado. More pessimism. Yeah, more pessimism. Yeah. And uh, it's a 1941 truck and it's been called Kenya Express. Mm -hmm. uh, the, it seems like he doesn't have a driver, mm. and uh, the, call, the turn boy is Raila Odinga, <laughs> and he's carrying, Wanji, he's carrying Wanjiko, mm -hmm. and on top of the bus is William Ruto and Uhuru Kenyatta, carrying a suitcase labeled that. Uh -huh. And uh, and and I believe this truck cannot move because it's yeah. in between. Well, it looks like rotage actually. Who is this what? carrying that? Is that that's Uhuru? Must, that's he Uhuru. normally draws Uhuru with the prince hat. Yeah, with the crown. I think that's rotage. Yeah, that yeah. might be rotage. This is this is Uhuru Kenyatta because it's next to Ruto and the lips. And really, he's bald. The, 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 the lips. No, you can see the way the hair has been combed behind. Anyway, so the point is that this Kenya Express is going nowhere. It's what yeah. Gado is telling us. Actually, it's not a suitcase, guys. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh my God. It's a jerry can. It's a full jerry can. <laughs> oh, that's the, true. The, it's fueling the Kenya it's, Express. It's, yes, which cannot move. <laughs> which can't move. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Okay. GK has had it with us. Yeah, I've had it. Can I think that, that as we said yesterday, the pessimism, too much. We need to find a way to have a lighter Absolutely. outlook Absolutely. on the state of the country. Absolutely. And there's only so much you can go with the blame game. Okay, so who do we leave? Yes. Can we have uh, the CJ and the Mercedes oh, sign? Oh, guys. absolutely. Yeah. I, I think uh, the star that. gives you, guys, us you don't like the grave one? Should we have a tie? Okay, we can have a tie. Have so a tie. have a tie between Dula and Ozan. Absolutely. Yeah. Fantastic. So what is our final thought? And now, our final thought, inspired by a book entitled Jeff Bezos, The Age of Amazon, mm -hmm. by a man called Brad Stone. Yeah. Nice. Maui. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Can I give a summary before we begin? Yes. Yeah. So this week, we've been looking at industry game changers. First, we began in the Gilded Age. Mm -hmm. um, we looked at the Rothschild family on Monday yeah. with the House of Rothschild by Niall Ferguson yeah. and saw how they created an international system of finance mm -hmm. and kept their family heritage strong through unity and hard work. Mm -hmm. yes. On Tuesday, we looked at Titan by Ron Chernow, yeah. who profiled the life and billionaire status of John D. Rockefeller, who yeah. is still 
still the richest man on earth when you yeah, convert yeah. today's oh, yeah. uh, absolutely. money. Absolutely. Um, but taught us the importance of philanthropy and how it can transform mm. yeah. lives. Yes. On Wednesday, we looked at the House of Morgan yes. by Ron Chernow as well, yeah. and saw the fascinating business acumen by J.P. Morgan. Yeah. Yeah. We saw how instrumental the House of Morgan was in helping create the modern American economy, mm. right. and how he created companies we still see today. Yeah. Yes. And yesterday, we looked at Elon Musk, <laughs> a more modern game changer, mm -hmm. who is seeking to lead the world in space travel, <laughs> who is looking at renewable energy and cars, mm -hmm. and as well as artificial intelligence. Yes. And yes. today, we're looking at the richest Man. Yes, the richest yes. man in the world. Yes. yes. To, um, uh -huh. You misquoted the title of the book, so <laughs> allow me to correct you. Okay. The book is actually called The Everything Store. Yes. So you got the subtitle right. Yes. Jeff Bezos and the Age of Amazon. Yeah, no, 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 I was reading, I, I forgot to. You forgot, it's okay. It happens to the best of us. Yeah. But I'd like to remind our audience that we do have a partnership with rafubooks.com. Yeah. And I think this is one of the books that you'd be able to get through them. Yeah. Um, so they're an online website and they deliver books all over the country, yeah. same day delivery in Nairobi, and I think next day delivery around the country. Yeah. Yeah. They also do regional deliveries. Yeah. Yeah. So to please, East Africa. Yeah, to East Africa. So do please check them out. They're very affordable, and they have every book you could think of. Yes. So yes, The Everything Store by Brad Stone, written in 2013. Mm. So this um, book documents the unprecedented rise of Amazon as an online retail store. Mm. Yeah. So this book is based on over 300 interviews with former and current employees, yeah. executives, and also his family. Yeah. So Jeff Bezos is notoriously private. He never likes to do interviews. He doesn't like to talk to people. Yes. And it's also the same for a lot of his businesses. He doesn't like people to know the ins and outs of what's going on. Mm. Right. But Stone managed to formulate the most in-depth biography to date. Okay. So I'm just going to skip all the way to his early, his later life. Yeah. You know, he's about yeah. 27 years old. So yeah. in 1991, yeah. he's 27 years old, and he notices that the internet is growing very fast. So the internet has just, you know, hit the mainstream. Right. And so while he's working for an investment firm as a senior vice president, mm. he would constantly talk about one thing to start this thing that he would call the everything store mm. and that's where the title of the book comes from yes. so he says I want a store online where people can buy absolutely everything, everything. Yes. but he realized that this would be very impractical early on yes. so he says that let me settle on something first and he settles on books yes. and he says that it was for three reasons yeah. One, books were seen as commodities. Yeah. Two, there were only two main distributors of books at yes. the time, yeah. or large distributors, and that was Barnes & Nobles, which yeah. still exists today, but yeah. is struggling. Yeah. And the other one was called Borders, which actually went bankrupt during the time of Amazon. Right. Yeah. Right. So right. he saw that there was little competition, so he could insert himself there. Yeah. And the third one is that there were more books in print than any other retailer could actually stock. Yeah. But if you put them on the internet, you can stock every book yeah. and just have them housed in different locations. Yes. Right. So what he decides to do is he quits his job, yeah. and he starts Amazon.com in 1995 with $300,000 money from his parents. Yes. And it's an instant instant success and he rides the wave of and success of the internet. What lovely yes. parents. I know, right? Yeah. Hi, can my parents help me? <laughs> yeah. So um, by the first year, they're making $16 million in revenue. Mm. By 1997, they're making $148 million in revenue. Yeah. And we need to note, revenue and profit, not the same thing. Because yeah. 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 he constantly reinvests money back into the company. Yes. So the focus for Bezos has always been on customers constantly yeah. and he believes in this cycle of low prices mm. means more customers yes. which means he can leverage suppliers yes. to have lower prices which yes. means more customers and it just goes round and round Absolutely. and round yes. but the dot-com bubble unfortunately burst and this yes. was in the late to early 2000s yes. and Amazon prices completely tank yes. however Amazon actually became one of the very few businesses through this um, struggle that was able to survive mm. and the question is why yeah. mm. the first one is through diversification they yes. went into other businesses so they said let's move away from books, let's do other yeah. small household items. Yeah. And the second one is long term planning. Yeah. So when ebooks launched with the Kindle and the iPad, yeah. Amazon was losing so much money. They were losing on average $5 per book yeah. because they wanted to be the cheapest in the market. Yes. But what they decided to do as well was invest very heavily on infrastructure, on fulfillment centers, yeah. um, and developing Amazon's own products. Yeah. And they were con constantly innovating. He was constantly pushing his team to innovate. Yeah. So you have Amazon Prime, Amazon Music, and you yes. have the Amazon Web Services, which I think you will touch on. Yeah. So this is one quote I read from the book that I really liked. Yes. It said that, Bezos isn't a visionary mm. with visions. Yes. He's an architect with mm. blueprints. Wow. And I really like that. Yes. Yeah. So Bezos, as we know, is currently the richest man in the world with mm. a net worth of $112.8 billion. That's of today. Wow. <laughs> Meanwhile, Amazon has a market cap of, on average, it hits about $1 trillion. Yes. So I think they were the second trillion dollar company in the world. In the world, yes. yeah. And you know he says... 
they are, see, Bezos has 16% of Amazon shares. Mm. And if Amazon is worth roughly a trillion dollars, yeah. that means over the 20 years they've been in existence, yeah. they've built over $840 billion of wealth for other people. Wow. The power of yes. entrepreneurship, yes. capitalism, and money, right? Absolutely. Yeah. Interesting. So yeah. he has, I think there's some lessons we can learn from yeah. Bezos yeah. and uh, Amazon by yeah. how he runs it. Yeah. So he's known for being visionary and quite a long-term thinker. Mm. Yes. And he's always willing to take um, a, a loss in the short term yes. for the long-term yes. um, advantage. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And we see that when he prices all books on Kindle at $9.99. Yes. So he was buying them for much more than that. Yeah. Yeah. So like he was taking a loss over time, but he Absolutely. realized, I want to be a market leader in yes. the selling of books. Absolutely. And that's exactly what he did. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Um, and then he has this thing which turns, I think, a lot of traditional companies on their heads. Yeah. He says the emphasis on communication in yeah. large organizations yes. is wrong. Yes. Mm. He sees communication as a sign of dysfunction. Yes. It meant that people are not working together in a cohesive and organic way. Absolutely. He yeah. also places emphasis on de decentralization yeah. and independent decision making. Yeah. Mm. That people closest to the problem should be able to solve it. You don't always have to come back and defer yeah. to your boss. Absolutely. I don't know how many bosses would be okay with that. And then the other interesting thing he says is no PowerPoint allowed at Amazon. Uh -huh. oh. So Bezos says yeah. that employees don't use PowerPoints or these um, slide decks mm. or whatever yeah. it is. Yes. He says if you want to put your point uh, points forward, yeah. you write a narrative, a six-page paper yeah. that sort of critically okay. outlines yes, what, what it is that you want to say. Because mm. he says yeah. people don't critically think about yeah. stuff yes. when they're yeah. just putting them on. Absolutely. Just bullet points. Yeah. Yeah. And then he has a two-pizza rule. Yeah. And that means that no team that's yes. working late into the night or working on a specific task yeah. Yeah. Um, should, should be bigger than so the team can't be bigger than can feed two pizzas. Ah. So if you, can't, if you have to feed yeah. with more, then the yeah. team is too big, right? Yes. Yeah. And he believes that big meetings are unproductive. Yes. And so he likes to replicate a Darwinian system. Yes. So survival of the fittest, mm. right. putting small teams to compete against head each head, other, yeah. Yeah. Um, and to solve Amazon's biggest problems. Mm. So you're sort of in an organization, but you, you're never knowing What's whether that? you'll make it to the next point. Oh, no. And yeah. this he's gotten a lot of criticism for. Mm. Yeah. People actually think that working at Amazon sometimes can be detrimental to your health. Yes. Oh. He often doesn't invest in the atmosphere of um, the office yes. where they work. Yeah. So often they don't put air conditioning when there are heat waves, like yeah. things oh, like gosh, that. Yeah. Or hiring temporary workers. Yes. And paying them low wages. And paying low wages. Mm -hmm. yeah. So that's, those are the type of things he has done in order to yeah. keep Amazon as big as it is. Yeah. yeah. You, you know, um, this man... <laughs> This what are you man, gonna say? This man has made me think a lot about life. <laughs> a lot. I we even worried. But, but first, let me say the nice thing. Yes. All right. The nice thing is, of all the techie guys we have uh, done over here on mm. Final Thought, he's the only one who completed school and actually graduated, I think, some... Cum summa cum laude. Summa, yeah. summa yeah. cum laude. Which is the top, I think, 1% to 2% of your class. Absolutely. But what shocked me, guys, is this. This guy divorced his wife, I think, earlier. Why are starting at the end? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, he did. Earlier this year. They had been married 25 years. 25 yeah. years. Yeah. And the wife took home yes. 37 billion yes. US dollars. Yeah, I yeah. think she's the third richest woman in the world currently yeah. yes. Yes. because of that divorce. Guys, do you know, in look my at, research, look at divorce <laughs> <I know. laughs> that is the GDP of Tanzania and Rwanda, and uh, no, of DRC and Rwanda put but together, combined, combined to with, with all the coltan <laughs> and gold and oil and diamonds, out of a divorce settlement. So um, she earned it. She, she was there. She the the she was there. No, she was there from the beginning. She got the GDP of two countries. <laughs> Why are you discounting One the work person. of this woman? She she was there with him. She worked with him. Yeah, yeah. She, she negotiated a lot of the warehousing contracts exactly. at the very beginning. But she's also very clever because she knew this man from 1998 earned a salary of $81,000 yeah, yeah. every single year. Yeah. It never moved. <laughs> However, she knew as well that his stock price had exponentially increased. Mm. And therefore, that's why she was given that's why Bezos stake from 16% went down to 12%. So are you saying she you're not going to get married? Yeah. That's not what I'm saying. Okay. <laughs> I am just saying, saying to the men out there. <laughs> hey. Well, she was very instrumental in his yes. success. Otherwise, he would not have been comfortable. Exactly. Giving, um, giving that so not giving even. I mean, they built that company together. together. I think that's what we are saying mm -hmm. on this table. <laughs> uh, the, 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 the second thing I want to say is yes. this. Um, today, 
uh, Uhuru Kenyatta met the vice president and executives of Amazon Web Services. Yes, That's very true. Correct. Yes, and what they're going to set up here is uh, is what they call edge location, yes. edge location, yep. and, and cloud services platform. And I was actually doing some research on that, and there are only five. Uh, five edge location edge countries locations yeah. in the world. Yes. All right. And having it here, I understand, is a big deal. It's a huge deal. What, what is that edge location? So basically, service? Amazon Web Services is mm -hmm. one of their most profitable you know, sub, yeah, yeah. sub businesses. Yeah. Yeah. They um, are a public host web public cloud hosting company and they're okay. the biggest in the world mm. Absolutely. and so they attach this edge location to it yes. so that when you're having um you're trying to send data around the world yeah. you connect to the closest server to, to you Fantastic. so, so in i think this case it would be nairobi. it would be nairobi. nairobi so then we end up becoming a hub for africa yes. and who knows maybe even like other continents maybe we'll become the hub for london as well of course beautiful now, getting such a big deal means you'd ha need to have discussions. Now, yes. when you went back, when Uhuru Kenyatta was in Unga about a month ago. Yeah, in New York. Uh, yes, in New York. He met uh, the American Chamber of Commerce. And part of the group that actually met Uhuru Kenyatta was the vice president of Amazon. Mm -hmm. right? Great. And they had a follow-up discussion, which was a meeting today. Yeah, so fruits of fruits that of, trip, of yes. foreign trips, they uh, paid absolutely. off. <laughs> and for those scribes who always write, what is Uhuru Kenyatta? Why, why are these trips uh, making? Why is Uhuru Kenyatta the making trips? Yeah. Let me tell you, this is such a big deal for the techies in this country. Yeah. And if you want to know this, um, I, don't, I don't know, um, Microsoft hosts so much servers, so many servers, mm. to host uh, government, government services. Yeah. Not just just in Kenya, but also across the board, uh, across our region. Yeah. Now, if this is what's going to happen with uh, with Amazon, Amazon yeah. this is a great deal, and it, it actually means employment for our youth. It means foreign direct investment for uh, for, for for Kenya. Yeah, great. and I think he should be applauded for he that. He should most definitely. We'll so see on a day where we had double win cartoon for Star and the Nation, yeah. and a winning headline from Standard. Yeah. Jeff Bezos said, a brand for a company is like a reputation for a person. Mm -hmm. You earn a reputation by trying to do hard things really well. Mm -hmm. So do hard things really well. Absolutely. Yeah. Don't be afraid. Yes. Uh, subscribe to our channel yes. and find us on TV. We're yes. on GoTV, Pang, Free to Air, Star Times. Yep. Have a great weekend. Yes.